first thing I think when I'm asked to be on camera is will I be represented properly? Will I be taken out of context? That's huge to me. I feel like I was mischaracterized on your show. I'm not happy about that. They chose just to use the first part of the interview and not use the part where I'm talking about an explanation. Then why am I here? Don't turn me into a liar. None of these are based on any science or anything that scientists have said. These are all completely false. They outright manipulated those interviews and those edits, and it's dramatic. If the news or the, you know, the newspapers get it wrong, the public is going to be misled very, very rapidly. So, Emery, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today about science friction, which is probably one of the coolest titles <laughs> that I've seen for a documentary. Thank you very uh, much. Um, amazing film. Uh, opened my eyes to a lot of things that I'd always suspected, but never really had confirmed. Um, and uh, I've got a lot of questions for you. <laughs> all right. All right. So, so the first thing is, what led you to wanting to make this film? Well, I mean, the questions that you mentioned having, but uh, hadn't confirmed, I had confirmed. And it made me angry that there are production companies and newspapers and all kinds of media out there who are knowingly, consciously making the decision to inaccurately represent science, scientists' words, scientists' meaning, um, consciously, unapologetically lying to the American public and around the world as well. Uh, Britain does this. There's no one who doesn't do this. Um, just, just lying to the public um, uh, because there's no, there's, there's no cost to doing that. There's only a, a, a windfall from making clickbait that is inaccurate, uh, from telling stories that are utterly nonsense, as if they are real, trying to convince people that Bigfoot exists, trying to convince people that, um, that psychics are, Oprah did, did this, that psychics uh, are doing anything other than, than bullshit performance art. Uh, trying to convince the public that Atlantis is a real place under the water, uh, other than what it really is, nothing more than an allegory and a story from year, many, many, many years ago. Um, lying to people, ancient aliens, the list goes on and on. They're lying to people. And so, nobody seemed to care. I did. Well, and I think, you know, I was watching this, and, and one thing that I have noticed over the years, because uh, I, I was an avid History Channel lover i loved watching uh documentaries on discovery and even back in the day when the learning channel was tlc it was the learning channel they right. actually had good content it was fascinating it was accurate it celebrated the content like with the history channel you actually got decent history lessons and things of that nature but then it became this there was like this spiral that happened as this kind of content that you took on here came into the fore, like they ran out of ideas or they were like, we, we need to cater to this demographic that just wants, you know, fear porn. And uh, I was curious about how that played into this and, and how you saw that uh, kind of happen with the, within the um, context of your, your film. Well, I, I'm with you 100%. The, the History Channel, history on the History Channel is history. Mm -hmm. um it's over it's gone it's uh it's a thing of the past what the history channel turned into is a uh misinformation and disinformation channel just like fox news it's just awful and uh, uh i don't know what more to add to what you said you've got it you nailed it you 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 are you are absolutely correct there is no uh, i have no understanding other than other than i mean i do understand this i understand that they are getting more viewers by lying to them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In the same way that government figured out that they get more voters when they lie to them. We are in a post-truth epoch right now. And it's not good at all. It's a harmful way to be and think. I, I agree. And, and kind of along that line too was, I, I think 
one way that they're catering to this this specific group is I call it faux smart, where it's you You mean fart. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm with yeah. you on this one. I like that. That's my favorite portmanteau of the year right there. Yeah. Whereas I'm watching this and I'm learning things and it makes me smart. And it's like, you're not putting any thought into what you're seeing. You're just taking that information at, at face value and not thinking like the, the thing that, that fascinated me the, was the whole, um, I think it was strange evidence. And you were talking about the, the, the volcano explosion and how they just, they knew what this was and anybody that had seen that video online had knew what it was, but they were like, oh no, we're gonna gotta talk about this thing that's got the word devil in it and we'll we'll push that. And then and then at the end they had to admit, you know, they probably had to admit because that was a very popular video, this is fake or not fake, but this is what this is, you know. This is what this really happened. Let me break yeah. that down for the for the listeners. Do uh, um first of all. The, the the story that you're talking about is a video that was posted on YouTube of some people in a boat. It was a tour boat that was meant to take them as close to a volcano that was actively erupting and pouring lava into the sea as say as they safely could, and then a pretty significant um, eruption in the side of the volcano poured a lot of hot lava in creating what what we refer to as a lava bomb where it hits so hot and so uh so um uh, aggressively that it blew a bunch of material into the air and one of those lava bombs made it onto the boat and they had to deal with that and that was all that was the video if you went to youtube you you knew what you were seeing you 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 knew what was happening all of that and then strange evidence emphasis on strange um lack that they of would, evidence the, strange <laughs> lack of effort it's strange that they would take this and turn it into a strange evidence story because there's nothing strange about the video that they initially built the story around they literally made up explanations for what happened on that boat and didn't tell us in the beginning that what was happening on that boat was what we knew was happening if we saw the video and so they 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 made up all kinds of things like like they i i, when, I think maybe bermuda triangle they talked about a, a bermuda triangle type place where boats sink and so they just used this as an excuse to tell these other nonsensical stories. And each time they'd tell it, they'd go, but it couldn't have been there because this happened at this location, not that location. It's like unbelievable that that even works. You would think that the person, the people watching at home would be like, then why did you tell me all of that? <laughs> Especially exactly. when you get to the end and they go, it was a lava bomb on a boat that was touring too close to the, when you got there, you would think the people would, I mean, we, I, I miss Elvis. He would have shot his television. <laughs> we should be shooting our television. And they that, do this. Oh, well, and I loved how they pushed the, oh, they were drawn to this, this I event. It's like, they weren't drawn to that event. They paid to be at that event. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. it was just bizarre. And <clears throat> I was I was amazed by by that I I'm, I just couldn't believe it and one one thing that uh, I I wanted to to talk to you about was the fact that this kind of content especially the the one about the apocalypse I I hate those I, they they just I'm like why do I need to be depressed more by watching something about the end of the world which and there was like a slew of them. At, especially around 2020 and, 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 you know, Y2K and all of that really kind of did that, but it's, it's fear mongering and it's fear porn. And that has kind of become, you mentioned, you know, Fox news and, and outlets like that. Like, it's not just Fox. It's like, everybody is wanting to, to get on the fear porn train. Yeah. This kind of started that in a way. Yeah, the, um, uh, uh, you know, what really, there are various moments in time that play a role in getting, um, getting that fear porn moving, that, that, that uh, apocalyptic 
tale moving. When I was younger, it was someone was had written a book or someone's had written a book about uh, Nostradamus, all that nonsense. It's all nonsense. Nostradamus didn't predict anything. Um, uh, if Nostradamus had any predicting powers, the first quatrain would say, people will be talking about me for thousands of years. He didn't make that <laughs> prediction, did he? Um, uh, he so, so in, I think it was 2012, is that right? They were saying that uh, the Mayan yep. calendar was yep. coming to an end. It's all, all television has to do is have some impetus for the uh, end of times. And by the way, every single year, there are countless numbers of people claiming this is the end now. I mean, at one point, does humankind go, you know, I'm starting to think you, you end timers don't know what you're talking about. I mean, at some point, we should start going, how many times do you have? I'm, I'm anti-religion, right? I mean, the same thing is true, in my opinion, with regard to religion. Religion, take the Christian faith, uh, has how many generations have been told that during their lifetime, Jesus will come back? And how many generations have gone believing that lie, even on their deathbeds, uh, and, and then it just goes to the next generation, it's just they move the goalpost to the next generation. At, one, at what point does humankind go, you guys are assholes. You don't know what you're talking about. Stop making crap up and scaring people, you jags. Well, yeah, it's it's the the I don't understand the and and it's it's taking something that with to me, if you look at the teachings or the Bible and the part that that Jesus is involved with, he, there's no like, you know, he's not a advocate of the. Well, I want I want everybody to die. You know, I, I want everybody to to boil in fire and, you know, this is it. Uh, and it kind of defeats the whole purpose of <clears throat> of being a good person. If this is just going to happen, like, woo, apocalypse. Well, I'm a good person if I'm trying to save all them souls. <laughs> exactly. It's just dumb. It's all so dumb. You know, it, nobody wrote about Jesus until 50 years after his death. The first, think about that. Think about the, if you, if no one told any story about an event in, that happened in history until 50 years after, how accurate could any of it possibly be? Uh, spoiler alert, not at all. <laughs> it ain't reliable information. Stop battling my mind with your pathetic attempt at a historic book. It's not a historic book these religious tomes are nonsense just like the, the tv shows that we're talking about in my film no and one thing that i wanted to ask you about um was the i i really found interesting and it, it made me start thinking about this connection is uh comedy and science and yeah. how it's it's interesting to me that you have uh well, like George Carlin, who was one of my heroes, and you have Tim Minchin and and a number of, of comedians in, in your series that that get on these issues. And I'm I was like, you know, there's there's a there's a connection there between wit and intelligence and thought. Well, and I, I the, really like that. To me, the comedy comics are the philosophers of this age, in my opinion. I mean, there are other philosophers that aren't comics, do not get me wrong, but they are one of the significant sources of philosophical thinking. Uh, it's a comics job to take what is happening socially and, 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 and talk about the problems with that. That's, that's what a comic should be doing. It's what we're meant to do. Um, and uh, going all the way back to Mark Twain, right? The, the grandfather of comedy. That's the guy that you want to, uh, you want to actually pay attention to. He's going to poke holes. The comics are going to poke holes and the she's. There are some very fine female comics doing the same thing. But we comics are going to poke holes uh, in, in, in the bad um, 
faith arguments uh, that have a profound effect on how our society is is thinking and structured. And I think that's a really good thing. Well, and and, and it it really is. And I, I love how you worked that into this and showed that. And I feel like, yeah, they, they call out the ridiculousness of, yeah. of everything. And especially here, this was just so amazing to see um and one of my last questions for you though i had to ask about this because it's so it's in the headlines right now thanks to his senate run i think it was a senate runner governor uh dr oz oh god I, oh my god I, he he um just it can't be a this. surprise that dr <laughs> oz is running for office let me be clear here mm -mm. if someone's running for office you can be sure they are a narcissist and it, it, it was hard for me to piece together how a heart surgeon could turn into a snake oil peddler, you know, a 20th century, 21st century snake oil, you know, the, the guy that pulls into town with a, a stagecoach and he opens up the back and puts on this little presentation about how he's got something that he brought from 10 towns over that's going to make your life better. It's going to make you feel amazing. He was just selling cocaine and snake oil. And now we've got the exact same thing, only he's got rather than 20 or 30 townsfolk around his stagecoach, Dr. Oz, by the way, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Dr. Oz is peddling absolute bunk and bullshit, and he's becoming a billionaire because he doesn't have 20 or 30 towns folk. He has millions of people around the country buying into his lies. I couldn't say that and get away with it legally if it wasn't a fact. He's a liar. He knows these things aren't real, and he won't bother to ch challenge me in court because he knows a court of law will find that he knows this. He's not suing the people who are calling him a charlatan because he's a charlatan. Well, and I I don't know if you saw the ad that he did for uh, to his to show how good of a marksman he is with his his rifle that he used for his campaign it he was the did most not it was the most ridiculous thing oh, i've ever seen no but it was the most pandering stuff and and that's what he was doing here and he knew he was you know i'm a dapper uh, i'm a dapper man and i will get the the audience here to to believe me because i've got the word doctor in front of my name and it was just the most sellout thing i've ever seen and he just continued oh to sell out oh my god i all i've seen so far really is a multi-millionaire pulling up and complaining about the price he had to of pay tests. for gas oh no just look up the ad and you will you will you will die of laughter it it's is amazing the most awkward thing he's got plaid amazing. on amazing oh my god he's wearing it's so plaid. pathetic and he's and shooting. what bothers me the most is that that works <laughs> there is a 30 percent of our nation that looks at that and goes that's a guy i want to have a dang beer with he's well, got I mean, doctor you know. in front of his name that means yeah, he's real beer. yeah yeah He's, but, he's not peddling beer he's peddling some other crap but yeah he's awful he's just awful if that guy makes one foot in the in the world of politics i'm done i'm done it I is the end of won. the world i hope i don't me. think he won <laughs> i don't think he won did he run and lose i like that i heard cawthorn lost this morning i think oz lost there's, good. there's a good possibility that he did not win <laughs> good i hope that's a fact I, I all of these people that trump is endorsing no 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 and no again are you kidding me and what what cawthorn hoff cawthorn i i don't know he i'm waiting for i'm waiting for he's the guy in the wheelchair that's him who that's his Ma friend's face madison madison cawthorn, cawthorn. yeah that guy you know he's gonna claim it was a rigged election because that's what those jag offs do now oh yeah you know and he doesn't have a leg to stand on there you go yeah. how's that for a punchline <laughs> i was i was like he meant to say that and that's brilliant. i did it's I great to, i'm doing comedy i'll be but, here all all interview but uh yeah i i just i was amazed by how 
Oprah kind of, you don't hear Oprah talk about Dr. Oz anymore, really. And he's kind of backed away. And I like the parallel between that you brought up between her getting played with the uh, Million Little Pieces, I think it was book. And the fact that now you've got Dr. Oz, who he had supported for a very long time, out there playing everybody too. And it was just, it the, the way those those interviews were staged and edited the, the the power of editing i i was trying to figure out how is it legal to do this yeah i don't know i i, I really i would like to see some kind of um legislation that holds networks responsible for information that they uh, that they put out and you know i have a libertarian streak in me i'm not a libertarian i think the libertarians have their heads firmly in their anuses but i've got some libertarian values to be sure i can find some value in almost any ideology and uh i, I i'm usually i'm usually on board with the if you think there ought to be a law you there probably oughtn't but in this case man i i, I think maybe it's the only way we're going to be able to, you know, clean up the West a little bit and stop this nonsense. Something has to happen where people are held responsible for knowingly disseminating dis and misinformation. I agree. And by the way, Oprah foisted Dr. Phil, a non-doctor, and Dr. Oz, uh, a, a doctor turned awful charlatan but foisted them on us as well as psychics you know oprah is a lovely wonderful powerful cool friggin lady but man at some point oprah step up and go i'm sorry i messed up i shouldn't have done this to you at some point you know oprah could bring all of that down with the stroke of a sentence and she doesn't and that makes the that 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 I wonder how much percentage she gets off of Oz and Phil. Um, and that's maybe what's stopping her is the money, you know? Well, and also admitting a mistake. I don't know if that's part of it too, that that's something that she should never have done because yeah. it, it means it may be a mark on her record. And that's, I don't know, but Emery, thank you so much. I, 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 I love the film. I love getting more insight into this it's something i always was curious about and i uh i truly love what you did there uh so well, thank, thank you, you so much sir can i add one thing before we go sure i want to say directly to oprah oprah listen admitting your mistake is the way to win the other back those of us you have lost if you admit your mistake and you promise to work harder to not allow those mistakes to happen again You'll get us all back. Do the right thing, Oprah. Do the right thing. Awesome. Thank you, sir. It's been thank a pleasure you. and uh, continued success to you. All right. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Bye-bye.